That was a clip from the short film titled Colic. It was written and directed by filmmaker Noel Harris. Hi, I'm Laura Coltis, your host for Arts Delight. You might well be asking, who is Noel Harris? Well, being a director, producer, and writer most times puts you behind the camera, not in front of it. So now, here's Noel in front of the camera to talk to you about his career behind the camera. But if you ask me where did it all start, I think ever since I was a kid. I mean, I, I love story, uh, uh, not to sound like a broken record, but this is a storytelling culture and I'm part of it. And as a kid growing up in downtown St. John's, I was amazed at all the singers and writers and storytellers we had here. And I, and I think I was heavily influenced by that. And watching television shows and movies on TV, I would become enthralled in the characters. And I was always moved by the stories that were deeply humanistic, never about the ones that were you know, blazing with special effects and all that, but I always look for stories that had that human touch and that to this day influences um, my storytelling. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's where it all got started. Now, I, I do remember when I was a producer at Cable Atlantic and you were intrigued by a Cable Atlantic uh, camera person at Brookfield High School where you worked. Yes. And uh, so uh, how did that, well, what developed out of that image of seeing a cameraman? And Yeah, uh, getting back to, when I was growing up, there wasn't as many opportunities in film and television as there are today. I would have loved to have come in now with, with NIFCO and the First Time Filmmakers Program and, and the Newfoundland Laboratory Film Development Corporation being on board, but there was, NIFCO was in its infancy kind of, or, or a little older than its infancy, but it wasn't as organized or it wasn't out there as it is now. And I just didn't gravitate towards it. I was like always hoping I would get into it, but it wasn't there. And, and, I, and I had a job uh, in a factory here in town great people worked there, you know, it was people making a living, but it wasn't what I wanted to do my whole life. And uh, one day while I was working there, a camera guy just happened to be in, in, a, in a part of the building and I saw it from a distance and it looked like a really nice camera. And I went over and had a chat with him and he told me like he was here from Cable 9 and he was actually studying in a school and they're located at this address. And so I just, that night, I just got in my car and I drove up there and the building was locked and I pounded on the door and... <laughs> Mike Walsh came out and he said yes and I said well I, I'd like to know what you guys are all about and because this is something I'm interested in doing and, and that was my first in in the business and I just from there I went to film school in Ontario I spent three years doing broadcasting radio television and film at Niagara College and I graduated and here we are. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course uh, <clears throat> I graduated from uh, uh, Niagara College and uh, did you go to work right away? Or? Yeah, I did. I worked in Toronto for uh, four and a half years or so and, you know, got my feet wet up there, learned what the business was about, and then came back here to become part of, you know, there's a family reason I came back mostly, but coming back here and, and finding that now the film and television business was more on its feet here, and I was uh, really happy with that, and I became part of it, and no regrets at all. I'm, I'm here, I'm gonna stay here, I'm part of the film and television industry here, and hopefully I can add to it. Well, I mean, I was just thinking too that uh, um, it, it's a very vibrant film industry culture in Toronto. I mean, you, you could get work out there, as soon as you finish one job, you could probably get another one. Is that Absolutely, the case? yeah, it was. It was uh, a great time. It was, it was very vibrant and, and there was a ton of work on the go. You, incredibly long hours, as anyone knows who works in film and television, and it's no different when you're working here in St. John's on the different productions. Uh, and, but yeah, it was really long hours up there. You would basically work and sleep all weekend and go to work again and, and just rotate. Anyone in this business, Bill, as you know, it's, it's a passion and if they stay at it, that's basically what it is. Mm -hmm. And it's intense work too, really, you know. It is, it is because, you know, producers get their money together and they have a certain block of time to make uh, a film or TV show and they, they have to stay on schedule. They, you know, their budget and their schedule are intertwined and there's uh, the first assistant director sets the schedule for a shoot day and we have to make it each day. And if we don't, then you have to pick up the shots elsewhere and then it's a constant tug going back and forth. How can we make it work? So, you know, good teams that are well-oiled get their days and uh, that's what any producer wants to see at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking, you so you came from Toronto to St. John's, uh, to Newfoundland. What was it like, uh, you know, going from 
this big powerhouse machine in Toronto, and to St. John's. I mean, obviously, uh, not, yeah. I, not... Like I said, there was no regrets. I, I I knew it wasn't as vibrant as Toronto, but I wanted to become part of this and and, and help help make it grow. And and you know, there's some great producers here and 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 who are part of it. And if everyone left, then we wouldn't have a film and TV business here, would we? So. Uh, you know, hats off to, uh, you know, guys like, uh, you know, Paul Pope and, and, and Barb Dorn and Mary Sexton and, and John Batcher and Rob Blackie. They, you know, are producers here. And, and you know, mm -hmm. there's an old saying out there, uh, you know, no producer, no film. Yeah. Well, sure. You know, so that's where it all starts. So. And I, I think film was, uh, well, uh, as we often refer to as the Renaissance in, in Newfoundland art in the 70s, you know, the acting, the stage stuff and everything else, but film and NIFCO was developing and uh, so even though it wasn't vibrant like Toronto, it had a kind of a, a nice feel to it, I suspect. Of yeah, I, I agree with you, I agree. <laughs> it's, and, and, you know, say what you like, this is home. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you, uh, you can go shoot your films and we have a vibrant community here, people help each other and it's our home. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's worth uh, mm -hmm. you know, no amount of money you can put on that one. When we return, Noel will talk to you about what a filmmaker has to do to get their film up on the screen. Hi, my name is Bill Coltis, author of the book Revenge Finds a Home. The story opens up with a bird watcher walking through the woods and he comes across a body that has an arrow through its neck. Then enters Inspector Bob Lynch. It's a very complicated investigation, which goes from Newfoundland, British Columbia, Dakota, and down to Brazil. It's an intricate story, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. If you want a copy, you can go to Amazon, Indigo Chapters, Flanker Press, or any fine bookstore in your area. Whatever two or more people I get, don't want to hear it. I just want to tell you. Don't, Clyde. Don't. Every time lately we plan to rob some place, you start with this religion crap. Yet we always do it, and you gladly take your cut. The place closes at midnight. There are three doors. You take the back, I take the front. What? You always cut me off, Leo. I was saying, my grandmother would always tell me, whenever two or more people are gathered and God's name is mentioned, that... That was an excerpt from the film, Two or More. Of course, what you see on the screen is only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the jobs created to make and deliver a film. To a certain uh, extent, well, not to a certain extent, you have to credit the government uh, for putting money. They, 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 you know, the Newfoundland Labrador Film Development Corporation was established in 1997. It's a huge part of our growth. Uh, continued to funding the Newfoundland Independent Filmmakers Co-op. NIFCO is essential to our growth. And it gives uh, young people coming in now the, um, the drive to keep going, I think, sure. when, when they see that, yeah, we are established here. And then it's coming upon us to come up with good stories that move people, that move people emotionally, that make people look at it and go, yeah, I, 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 I totally can feel myself getting involved in this story. And it starts at the script stage. And, you know, it, it's up to us as filmmakers and writers and, and, and directors and producers to craft stories that people want to see mm -hmm. and you know with us working together with, with funding to make this happen it's it's looking bright for our future it certainly is so you came back from Toronto the, you know you sort of wove yourself into the community here um, what did you first do like did, did you work on other other people's films absolutely you, yeah. And, yeah anyone who works in the film and television business I, I think globally using a blanket term that then everyone some people have certain jobs but a lot of people work freelance and that's what you do if a film or television show takes six months to shoot you sign a six-month contract and when that six months is done you're where's my next gig mm -hmm. 
And it's no different here in Newfoundland. There are, are certain entities that have their own production company, but they always need to have new shows and new development uh, projects coming in to, you know, keep the doors open. But uh, and anyone who doesn't have their own production company works freelance, whether you be a grip or, or, or yeah, a right. gaffer or, or uh, you know, script supervisor or whatever. And there's um, there's enough here right now to to have not Toronto or Vancouver standards, but to keep our vibrant community going. And um, you know, in the last number of years, we've had some great productions and great films shot here. And uh, you know, we, we, with the new wave of new young people coming in with their new ideas, it you know it looks bright. And and I'm 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 looking forward to the future here in Sorry. Newfoundland and Labrador for our film and television business. So, I mean, so you uh, come back to Newfoundland, you worked on other people's projects, but rattling around in your head is these, your own ideas, and then really, I want to do my own stuff. So what was kind of your first step into uh, that? Yeah, I went to NIFCO, the Newfoundland Independent Filmmakers Co-op. They have a great program here called the First Time Filmmakers uh, Program, and I made a short film titled Colic which when it was made did really well on the festival circuit. I got um, a national broadcast here on television Canada and I got one in the US, won a few awards at festivals. And I, I was happy with it. it. It kind of proved to me, oh, I can tell a story. I, I can work with actors and, and, and collaborate with uh, an editor and collaborate with a sound designer and collaborate with uh, you know, uh, a composer and, and, and it was just so much fun doing that and all the elements came together and it gets back to the storytelling culture I was imbued with growing up here and, and I just took stuff that happened in my family and, 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 and another thing I liked which was physical fitness and I just put two stories together sure. and, and people gravitated towards it. It just, uh, you know, without dialogue, I, I, I told the entire story with images, which is um, what true filmmaking is in my, in my opinion. Not that dialogue is not important, but if you can tell a story using just images, do it. And uh, Seems to me that's kind of a, a harder way to tell a story, or, or is it? Yes, no, it, it, it all comes down to the writing, and if you can write your story and, and uh, use images and work with your actors to tell it, is it harder to me? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's something that it takes practice. Mm -hmm. It's something that you, you watch a lot of other films, you, you, you're, you're influenced by other filmmakers, uh, and uh, yeah, well, that's a tough one. I don't know if it's harder. No, it, just, it just seems to be a, a bit of a challenge. It is. It is a challenge. And there's other people out there who are really good dialogue writers. And, yes, and exactly. that's, that's what they gravitate more towards. And, and I'd like to think I'm a bit of both. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I've, I've seen, like I said, I've seen some films where the dialogue is amazing and it's just nothing but dialogue. And I'm like, it works. Sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then you see other films where it's just the images that tell it. And, and that's really moving, too. So... So briefly, what is, uh, what is uh, Colic about? Basically, at its core, Colic is a story about the ineffable bond of love between a parent and their child. They complete each other and give each other what they want. I just told it with a humorous spin. So, it, you know, if you watch Colic at the end, that, that's what it's about. The, the father gives his son what he needs, and the son gives his father what he needs. And I think, you know, in humanity, that's, that, that is the core of the parent-child relationship, they complete each other. Well, we're going to take a little break now and show a little clip of that. Thank you. 
It won the bronze plaque at the JVC Tokyo Video Festival in Japan, and there was like, which is third place, and there was like, I think, over 2,000 entries. Imagine. Gee. And it also won honorable mention at the Cabbage Town Film and Video Festival in Toronto. So a couple of awards for a first-time film in a national TV broadcast in Canada and the U.S. You know, it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't too bad of a start, I guess. Yes, and then, of course, then there's the people involved in Colic. Absolutely. Uh, Sherry White and Roger Mon are the two st stars of Colic. Uh, amazing. They came out and said, you're making your first-time film. We'll help you. And, and they were just amazing to work with, two great performances. And now they're out today. Both of them have their own careers up and going, and they're creating work here in Newfoundland uh, f for people. And, and, you know, and people are earning income from their ideas. And, and that, you know, Sherry wrote, wrote Maudie, and now she got her own uh, TV series on the go, Little Dog. And Roger has his own production company, Up Sky Down Productions. Yeah. I mean, there you that's go. It. That's it. So the ball keeps on getting bigger The ball bigger keeps on growing in that. And, and, you know, I'm grateful for those two for coming out and helping me make my first film. From Colic, Noel produced and co-produced two more short films that got even more international attention. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. Christie Street is. I I'm looking for the Women's Church Auxiliary. Uh, Christie Street, yes, uh, I'll show you, ma'am. Uh, here you go, just uh, take your purse and uh, come over to the door and, and I'll show you. You take the street on the left follow it, then you take the first right. First right. Drive for a few minutes, and you can't miss it. Oh, thank okay? you. Thank you. Okay? Street on your left, then the first right. <laughs> she took the wrong road. She, that road leads to nowhere. That road leads right to us. That was a clip from Two or More, Noel's second major short film. But to make any kind of film, it takes time, focus, and money. Noel was lucky to be able to find work here in Newfoundland, which helped him hone his skills and gave him an opportunity to raise money for his next production. When Republic of Doyle um, started up, I worked in the locations department. Uh, our job was to read the script and, and go out and find the various locations in and around St. John's uh, and, and, and do all the logistics work for getting the crew there and, you know, permits and working with insurance and working with the police and, and making sure all the neighborhood knew what was on the go and, and working with the media. And uh, that was a, a great six years work, six seasons of work. And, and I, I, I learned so much uh, through it, and and it part you know that partially inspired uh, my short film touch, working through there some of the things I saw, and and I, I put a couple of different stories together and came up with my next short film touch. But you know, getting back to it, it definitely was, and you know, once again, it gets back to the Newfoundland Labrador Film Development Corporation, and NIFCO was involved in that with post production, mm -hmm. and it takes a lot of entities coming together to 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 make it work for everybody, and and I'm blessed to be part of it. Mm -hmm. So that uh, brings me up to the next stage is your short film, Touch, which uh, I think we should start off again. Did it win any awards? Yeah, Touch has done very well. Uh, it was released in the spring of 2016.
when we return, Noel will talk a little bit more about the short film, Touch. Less than half. I told you last month. Hey, uh, come on, Aaron. He's good for it. You know that. Then you pay me for him. <sighs> Look, I got six appliances and all this other stuff, right? It needs to be worked on. It's already sold. I'm staying open late to sell it. Look, he works, I get paid, and you get your money. Tomorrow morning, this is full. Or you, you know what's gonna happen. Sorry, um, so. Noel has a pretty impressive list of awards for the short film, Touch. And Noel is so delighted that it could all happen here in Newfoundland. It's a one thing to uh, win, but uh, it's another thing to, yeah, I mean, you've got to get into the festival. And Correct, and, and that's, that's no small order because each jury at each film festival have their own criteria. Mm -hmm. and, and no two juries are the same, so you can get one jury looking at your film and, and go, yeah, don't like it, and then another jury will go, no, this is, this is a festival winner, like this is, and it's, it's different, uh, there's no two juries alike. Uh, and I'm kind of proud that it's a Newfoundland story too, yeah, that, exactly. that's done well. And yeah. uh, anytime I go to a festival, uh, or, or, or Kristen has gone to a festival, or Daryl has gone to a festival, we always tell them about Newfoundland, and this is where the film was made, and, mm -hmm. and you know, proudly wave that flag. <laughs> well, thanks very much for being on the show. Thank you for having me, Bill. Well, that's our show for this week. I'll see you again soon.
If you have a comment about this program,